Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As promised, today I'm going to be making my very first male doll. So far, since I'm a newbie doll artist, I've only worked on female dolls and I'm so excited. This doll is also extra special since he's going to be the start of a series I want to do here on the channel. I wanted to make a group of dolls that all look different and have their own unique personalities, but still feel like a little family for my mini-me. So today, we're kicking off the brand new family series! Woohoo! But before we jump in, I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you guys. It's been so lovely reading all your sweet comments on my last video, and every time I get a new subscriber I get ridiculously excited. You guys really motivate me to keep going. So thank you! If this is your first time here, hi! A very warm welcome to you! Don't forget you can subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos, and boop that like button if you enjoyed this one. And if you like what I do here, why not head over to my Instagram too? I post there all the time. I also wanted to announce that I'm making all my doll clothes patterns available for free download on my website. I plan on adding all of them as I finish them, so head over there and take a look. Okay, with all that said, Let's get into the video. For this doll, I wanted to create a kind of wild dark forest boy. <laughs> Regular dark boy by day, enticing forest guardian by night. Something like that. I was inspired by different things like Ilias from Ancient Mage's Bride and the music video for Bronte by Gautier. I wanted him to have a regular outfit, and another that's been stained and torn from running barefoot across the forest floor. I wanted each doll in the family series to have a different color palette, so for this doll I chose green and black. And to create our dark forest boy, I'm going to use this Deuce Gorgon doll from Monster High. I chose him because he has the lips and chin shape that I imagined for this character, and he already has a green color scheme. He's perfect! You may notice that he's already missing his green snake cap. That's because I actually removed it months ago before I even started my channel. Since he doesn't have rooted hair like some of the other monsters, I knew I would probably not be able to root him unless I poked all the holes myself. But then I got an idea. Remember this? I was trying to figure out what to do for his hair when I noticed that these wigs are actually rooted caps, as you can see on the inside. It's a perfect fit for Deuce! <laughs> On to the customizing! To remove his snake cap, I had to wiggle the snakes around and tug them out of the head first. Once that's done, you can use any thin, sharp tool to scrape around under the cap to loosen the glue. I know a lot of customizers use craft knives, but I was scared I'd accidentally cut into his vinyl head, so I opted for this cuticle tool instead. Eventually, after much persuading, it should pop off. For the wig cap, I approached it much like I would with any doll head. I cut the hair close to the scalp, and use a variety of different tools to scrape the roots from the inside. Until eventually you're left with a blank canvas. What's nice about this cap is that it kind of makes up for the indentations in Deuce's head. I then use 100% acetone to clean it up, since I don't want there to be any purple showing through. All clean! Now on to the fun bit. I got this gigantic ball of yarn from my local craft store. It's not 100% acrylic, but it didn't end up giving me any problems. To make his hair, I cut a long strand from the ball, 
unravel the strands, feather out the ends, and pull. And just like that, you have hair strands. I saw this method on Dolly Mixture's channel and I've been dying to try it out because it's just... Oh my gosh, it's so long! I wish I knew about this before. Oh. <laughs> this whole bunch of hair took me less than five minutes. As I would have done with a regular reroute, I'm going to use my rerouting tool to replug all the holes in the wig cap. I separate a strand of hair from the bunch, fold it double, and slip it onto the end of the needle. Then I can stab it into the existing holes. Because this is a really thick fiber, I plug densely in the areas you're most likely to notice any gaps like the parting line and the hairline, but more sparsely everywhere else. Once that was done, I put it on the doll and tied it up like this for some reason. <laughs> Then, because I decided to root at least some hair into Deuce's real scalp to smooth the transition, I dunk him into some boiling water until his head is nice and squishy, and then pull it off. I use some acetone again to remove the factory makeup. And his arm tattoo. Going back to my gargantuan yarn ball, made mostly of polyester apparently. I follow the same method to gather more hair fibers, unravel the strands, feather the ends, and pull. I'm using a thick leather needle to poke new holes in his head, and leave it in there so the hole doesn't close up while I put the yarn on my tool. I repeat the process until he has this weird little tuft of hair. <laughs> but it does help it look better once he has the wig cap on. He still has some gaps at the sides, and you could root this if you wanted to. But I have other plans for these, so I'm just marking off where they are. Now I can glue inside the wig cap to keep the strands from falling out, using some all-purpose glue that I smush around with the back of my marker to make sure they're all covered. I do the same on the inside of his head for good measure and set them aside to dry. Once dry, we can move on to more exciting things. I want to embed some of these tiny, super strong magnets in his head so that his antlers will be detachable later. First, I mark the spot where I want the magnet to be. Then use my box cutter at a very bad camera angle to hollow out the spots I marked on his head. You should be left with something like this. I use that same all-purpose tacky glue to stick the magnet in place. It doesn't need to be super sturdy, just enough to stay in place long enough to glue the wig cap permanently to his head.
To fill these gaps he still has, I'm going to use Prattly Quickset Epoxy Putty. I mask off his hair using some plastic wrap and a piece of fabric, and hold that in place with some pins, making sure I leave those gaps exposed. As with any epoxy product, this putty comes in two parts, which is mixed together to form something super strong. I combine equal parts of each color until it becomes a single tone of beige, and use some of that to cover the gaps. I'm using water in between to smooth the transition and wipe away any excess before it can harden on his face. It takes about a day to fully cure, and I had to do it twice because it broke off while I was putting his head back on. But once that's done, you can move on to the magnets again. I'm going to embed some more magnets in the base of the antlers and I'm making sure I put the right sides together. Now we can form the antlers. First, I measure out a few lengths of thick but flexible jewelry wire. Then I twist some of it around two of the magnets. When I'm happy with how it's sitting on his head, I can start twisting and bending the wires to form a skeleton. I'm going for some proper deer anthers, so I reference some pictures off camera to make sure they look right. Eventually I get this. To bulk up the anthers, I'm going to use some air dry foam clay so that they stay as light as possible. I used to love this stuff as a kid. I mix black, yellow, and red to get brown. Then I simply wrap and squish it around the anthers to get the general shape. At this point, they kind of look like sausages, but after the clay has dried a little bit, I use a variety of tools to scrape, shape, and poke it until it has a more anthery type of texture. There we go. To make his mask, I mask off his face with some cling wrap and I'm going to be using the stone texture air dry clay because I thought the texture would resemble bone well. I make an upside down pear shape and again referencing images of real deer skulls off camera, I try to get the sculpt as close as I can. I poke some eye holes. make some nostrils, cartilage gaps, widen here, indent there, and sculpt in a top row of teeth. While that dries, I really wanted to make him a torch with a real flame, so I decided to embed a teeny tiny candle in there. This tea light candle is the smallest I could find, but it's obviously still too big, so... I cut it up until I have this teeny tiny candle. I can then wrap it in the foil it came in, embed it in a wire frame just like I did with the magnets, 
and make the torch the same way I made his antlers. I made him these shoe bases with the stone clay too, but lost the footage. I'm gonna make shoes for almost every doll in the series though, so keep an eye out on my channel if you want to see how. Everything looks nice and dry, so we can move on to painting. I paint the anthers with a warm tone of brown acrylic paint first. This clay softens back up when it comes into contact with water, so it helps to cover it all with a base color first. That way, the rest of your paint job won't get messed up later and your anthers won't lose their shape. Once that's fully dry, I dry brush them with progressively lighter shades of brown until I get something that kind of resembles wood, which is what I'm going for. You can see here the dry brushing really helps to bring out all your sculpted details. I also dry brush on some green because I want them to look like they get caught on twigs and things while he's running through the forest. Or maybe there's some moss growing on them by now. I painted the torch in exactly the same way until it looks like this. Here you can really see that I was going for something made of wood, like the roots of a small tree maybe. For his shoes, I start off with a base coat of black acrylic paint first. As with the foam clay, this tends to soften back up with water, so this base coat is really important to protect your sculpt. I wanted them to look a little scuffed and worn, like they're his favorite pair of sneakers, so I dry brush them with a light shade of grey to get that look and bring out the details in the sculpting. I'm going to be painting the mask a base color of ivory acrylic paint, since it's supposed to look like bone. Then when that's dry, I'm giving it a wash with some watered down brown acrylic paint to age it. I'm letting the brown run into all the cracks and crevices, and dab it off with my finger wherever I don't want it. For his kunai, I made the basic shape with stone clay and a wire armature and I'm painting it with a base layer of dark grey acrylics first to protect the clay from the water. I also paint the little leaf hilt green until it's opaque. Then I come back in with a lighter grey to dry brush the edges of the knife and give it some texture. I meant for this to look like metal but it actually looks more like stone, which I'm not mad about. I also dry brush the little leaf. To finish it off, I'm taking a piece of black wax cord and wrapping it around the hilt to give it grip. Looks good. On to his clothes. To finish his shoes, I cut this little pattern I made from some green and black felt. I like using felt for shoes because it's sturdy and doesn't need to be hemmed. Once it's all cut out, I'm going to sew it together like this, using some light green thread. I want the stitches to be visible, because I think it looks really cute that way. I also cut out a little bit of the green on the inside to make it easier to bend the felt. Now we can glue them to the shoe bases we made earlier, like this. We can also glue in the tongue of the shoe. After lacing them with some green embroidery thread, they look like this. I originally learned about shoemaking from watching Delightful's channel, so be sure to go over there and show her some love. I also added some felts and laces to the back of the mosque. 
Using my male monster high pants pattern, I made him some jeans. I gave the shorter one some rips and tears and weathered the edges at the bottom, but left the longer one as is. I also made him this hoodie and this t-shirt. Now here comes the exciting, albeit slightly dangerous bit. I'm going to bleach his hoodie. First, I lay down a scrap piece of the same fabric I used for the hoodie, and I'm going to paint on it with regular clear bleach. Make sure you get the clear kind, cause thick ones won't work. Then you can start testing it out. I should also mention that I had my windows wide open for the fumes, but it would probably be better to do this outside. Do as I say, not as I do. Once you've left it for a while and you're happy with it, you can rinse it out with some soapy water. Now I'll do the same to his hoodie. I protect it first by putting some leftover packaging in between the layers. I'm also taping it down so it won't move too much while I'm painting it. Then I just paint a general skeleton shape on it. I think the back of it came out the best. As a final touch, I paint the shorter jeans with some green to make them look stained and mossy too. And I make him these little fingerless gloves, which I also paint with green. To complete his ensemble, I made him a little tool belt using pieces of faux leather, jump rings, metal fosteners, his kunai and other little doodads I thought he might like to have with him. And there we go! Before we start the face up, I want to give him a bit of a haircut. So I section it off and wet it so the fluffs won't go flying everywhere. Then I use a variety of different razors and scissors to thin it out and cut it shorter. I do that all around his head until it looks like this. Face up time! I mask off his hair again, put on my protective vapor mask, and take him outside to spray him with an initial coat of Mr. T. I also spray his entire body since I'm going to be blushing it. I hang his tiny naked body creepily in a window for a day until he's fully dry. Then I start by blushing his face with some warm orange and red tones around his nose, his lips, and wherever else you would have shadows. You can see here I've painted the epoxy putty with acrylic paint and tried to match his skin as best I could, but we're going to be drawing on them so it doesn't need to be perfect. I also add some light blue to some areas of his face, a tip I picked up from Jackie O, to give it more dimension. Once I'm happy with his blushing, I can take a watercolor pencil that's a little darker than his skin and start sketching out the eye placement. I'm going for a sort of half closed lid to make him look relaxed and cool, maybe even a little edgy. <laughs> I also sketch in the placement of his irises. Generally, when you want your doll to be looking forward, you should have slightly more of the whites of the eyes visible on the outer corners than the inner corners. I also go ahead and mark the general shape of his eyebrows. Something cool I noticed with a lot of guys is that their eyebrows are more furrowed and start lower in on the brow bone and then go thicker towards the ends, which gives them this sexy smoldering expression, so I'm trying to imitate that. I also draw where I want to add hair around his hairline to cover up the epoxy.
After another layer of Mr. T, I can add some pastels and darken everything I already drew. I can also sketch in some individual eyebrow hairs with black. I can also start adding color to his irises, but the colors didn't want to build very much. I also sketch in his pupils. Eventually, after adding highlights in some areas and some graphic lines to form his eyelashes, his face starts coming to life. I also blush his body and add some detail. When I feel like the pencils won't build anymore, I switch to gouache paint to finish his face. Looking back now, I would have used acrylics instead, but live and learn. <laughs> I darken his lash line, paint his hair, brighten up his waterline, add the whites of his eyes, then finally, I get to add pretty colors to his eyes. I use a mix of greens, grays, blues, and even some orange. Until they look like this. This is where things started to go wrong. I wanted to add gloss, but when I did, it picked up and smeared the pigment. Ugh. Why? I kept going thinking it looked okay and went on to styling his hair. In the end, I decided I really didn't like the glossy eyes. They just reflected way too much. The reflection doesn't bother me with my mini-me, but because his eyes are so small, they kind of just disappear when they reflect too much. So I re-sprayed him with Mr. T, repainted his eyes with acrylics, and I was happier with them. Lesson learned. <laughs> With that done, we can finally dress him up. So, what do you think? I think a good name for our forest boy is Adam, since he's the first male doll I've ever repainted. In the end, I'm really happy that I repainted his eyes. They would have bugged me until I did it anyway, and they look perfect now. During his face-up, something really great happened. With my previous doll, the Mr. T looked a little dewy, but this time round, maybe because it's winter so it was much colder, he ended up super matte. I even gave my mini-me another spray to dull down her shininess. <laughs> Sadly, even though his torch did burn for a little bit, I wasn't quick enough to catch it on camera, which is a shame. It still looks cool though.
if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like this video, please consider giving it a good old fashioned thumbs up or sharing it with like-minded people who might enjoy it too. In my next video, I'll be customizing my first ever After High doll, and I'm super excited to announce that she'll be part of a Magic Girl collaboration. It's gonna be great! So if you don't want to miss that when it comes out, make sure to boop that subscribe button, stick around, and as always, stay golden. I'll see you next time. Bye!